All right. This is Coach Mosby. This is the fourth and final installment of my podcast, Basketball IQ. Uh, we're dealing with the idea of you play how you practice. You play how you practice. I've sat in on a lot of different practices, different schools and whatnot. And what I've always been told from my years in high school is that you play the way you practice. because, And that's true. You can't practice one way and play a different way. It, it doesn't work like that. You can't, um, you know, be lazy in practice and then expect to be full of fire during the game. That may have worked for Dennis Robin, but Dennis Robin was a, a, a different kind of player. You know, a lot of you young guys, you're not going to be able to pull that off. So what do I mean by that? You play the way you practice. If you hustle in practice, that's one thing. But you have to know why you're doing what you're doing. See, a lot of people that know me know that I like to do public speaking. And they, you know, I had, I, I have on the back of my truck motivation speaker, but to really tell you the truth, I'm not a motivation speaker. I can motivate you, but motivation only lasts for a short amount of time. I'm the why guy. I like to find out why, why are you doing what you're doing? Cause that's when we can get to work. See, I can inspire you with motivation, but that only lasts a short amount of time. But if you're making mistakes and, and, and you're confusing yourself and you don't know where you're do, what you're doing and you don't know where you're going, we got to find out why you're doing what you're doing, okay? And in basketball practice, it's the same thing. You're getting beat on defense. Why? Okay, let's fix that. Uh, your shot's not going down. Why? Okay, let's, let's fix that. Um, as a team, guys, are, you're out of position on defense. You're getting beat on defense. Why? Why are you doing what you're doing? You know, and it could be that the coach has told you time and time again what to do, but maybe you don't understand. Um, maybe there's something in there, some little little gem that you don't understand that, you know, if we drop that gem in there for you, then you get it. But, as, you know, you have to figure out why you do what you do. That's what's got to be analyzed. I don't look at what you're doing, you know, wholeheartedly as the only factor as far as, you know, your behavior, I, I want to find out why you're doing what you're doing. And um, when I'm teaching kids how to shoot and dribble and, you know, footwork, all that stuff, you know, I, you know when, when they make a mistake, why'd you do that? You know, why'd you do that? Why, did, why do you think that's going to work? And then we can, we can, we can really dig down into the, into the subject matter because the reason why that kid thought it would work we can analyze it and find out why it won't work. And then that's going to get us back to doing things the right way. So that's, that's why I love training because training is, is, is a uh, part of its physical and, and the most part of biggest part of it's psychology, you know, it's just mental, you know, building that, that, that basketball IQ. And that's, that's the thing that I try to instill in you. I'm not just going to teach you to be a shooter. I'm going to teach you to be, a guy that can control the game and stretch the floor. Because what good does it do to be a, a, a great shooter? Well, you know, as far as playing how you practice offensively, you know, you got to think that you got to break the game down. Basketball is a simple game. It's demanding on the body. But it's a really simple game. How do you win? Well, you outscore the other team. That's it. I don't care if it's by one. As long as you outscore the other team and there's no time on the clock, you win. That's what we play for is to win. But if you're like me, you don't like close games. I don't like nail biters. I like to uh, I like to assemble a team that's not necessarily an all star bunch of guys, but guys that execute like all stars. If that makes any sense, I, I need guys that can execute on a continuous basis when they're full of energy and when they're tired. Then I need guys to be able to come off that bench and execute just as well and hold it down. Not to say the starters are better than the bench. I want to have it. I can. I'd love to have a team where the bench is just as good as the starters. You know, and you can do that if you train everybody the right. If you train everybody together during the summer. If you train during the off season together, you can. You can possibly get you a team like that. A lot of coaches will say you can't, but you can. You know, you can have a team like that offensively and, and what I'm telling you is you know you you practice the way you play 
offensively, how do I become a juggernaut? How do I become a better player? Okay, number one, know your offensive set. Whatever offensive set you're running, know it. Know it like the back of your hand. Draw diagrams when you're at home. Study them every day. Doesn't take that long. You know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes just looking at them. Know all the nooks and crannies of where everybody's supposed to go. Okay, is that going to make you a better player? Nope. What's going to make you the best player on the floor? You ready? The best player on the floor is the one that can take the offensive set that the coach has put in front of them and can take their individual skill set. Your skill set, let's say you can shoot, you can shoot long range to stretch the floor, you can shoot mid range, you can drive to the basket, you move well without the basketball, you you know, you do all of those things as far as score. Let's look at just scoring. Let's look at just scoring as an individual. The best players in the world are the ones that can take an offensive set. And they can take their skill set and they can identify their individual spots inside that offensive set. That is the best player on your team. That's the best player on your team right there. Now, you can have a a team full of guys that are just awesome. How? You know, people are talking about, man, the whole team is good. The Fab Five, you know, whatever. That whole team is great. The whole team is great because everybody has trained during the offseason. They've trained together. They've all developed better skill sets. Everybody can shoot. Everybody can dribble. Everybody can pass. Everybody can move without the ball. They screen and roll. They know how to spread the floor. They understand spacing, all of that stuff. And when it comes to scoring, everybody knows that they have a skill set and they know where their spots are. Like if you were to play NBA 2K and you look at somebody's hot, hot chart, you know where all the hot spots are for certain shooters. As a player, that's what you develop. You develop. You know where your spots are in the offense. You know where you can get your points. It's not about just running the offensive set because after you run an offensive set a few times, I'm going to figure it out. But there are going to be some gaps out there where I know I can find my shot. You know, I know when we we run this offensive set and that defense shifts, I know exactly where I can get my shots from. And I'm confident enough in my mechanics that I know that if the only shots I get tonight are three-pointers, I can knock these down. If I have enough time, I can knock these down. Why? Because this is part of my skill set. This, this is not one of them shots where I just shoot and it's lucky if it goes in or you know whatnot. This is part of my skill set. If this is all you're going to give me, I'm going to knock this down. If you, if you close out fast and take that from me, I've got my mid-range and I've got my drives. And when I drive, I've got either got I've got a, a regular layup where I'm using the backboard. I got my floater. You know, I've got I've got all of these things, and that's part of my skill set. Best players in the world, that's what they do. They know the offensive set. Michael Jordan's a prime example. He knew the triangle offense back like the back of his hand. Okay? He knew the triangle offense. He knew what his skill set was as a jump shooter. He knew where he could get his shots off from. So he he knew that in the triangle offense, he knew where his spots were. He didn't force it for the most part. He knew where his spots were. So if he when he ever he was able to get to his spot, he recognized that because he had studied the offensive set well enough to know where his spot was. That's why Michael Jordan, even at a, in the triangle offense, was such a deadly player. You take Bush, Kerr, Pippen, all of these other players. They did the same thing. They know they knew what their roles were. They knew where their spots were. They just worked the offense until they could get to their spots. That's what's going to make you a better player. If you think about offense that way, don't come into the game thinking I'm going to get 20 or 30. No, you come into the game knowing where your spots are. The results, you know, if you get 20 or 15 or whatever, that's not something that you set out to do. That's going to be the result of you executing in your offense, utilizing your skill set because you understand where your spots are, the spots that give you the best chance to score. Because every time we come down on the offensive end, we want to score. That's the goal. We want to score. Well, what about defense? Well, we need to stop them on defense. We need to get some stops because we can go back and forth and and it's going to come down to who gets the last shot, you know, that, 
you know, if everybody's taking 30 shots the entire game, well, whoever's able to get a chance to take shot number 31 and make it, they're the one that's going to win. We don't want to leave the game in the hands of, of chance like that. On the defensive end, it's very, very simple. Hold the other team to one shot. Don't foul and bail them out. Fouling is, is something you do at the end of the game when it's close, you need to stop the clock. That's not something you want to be doing a whole lot of during the game. So you got to move your feet and cut the guy off. But when a shot goes up, everybody has to put a body on somebody. You got to block out. When you block out, you hold them to one shot. If they miss, obviously you get that rebound. You go to the end. You want to have as many chances to score as possible on your end, and you want to limit the amount of times that they can score. That's why you press. That's why you trap. Because you're trying to create offense from turnovers, or you're at least trying to stop these guys from scoring. If you can stop them from, if it's a back and forth game and you can, you and it's two minutes left in the game, and you get, you know, you get two stops, you know, you've already gone down and scored a couple of times. Then you get two stops on there, and you go down and score again. All of a sudden, you're up by eight points, less than two minutes left in the game. That's how basketball works. You play the way you practice. If you don't do those things in practice, if you're not executing your traps and things in in practice, you can't execute them in a game. If you're not finding your spots, utilizing your skill set and practice inside of the the coach's offensive sets, then you're not going to be able to do it in the game. And that's how easy, but that's, I mean, that's, I mean, cut and dry. That's about as easy as basketball is. You know, you find your spots on, on offense, learn the offense, find your spots on offense, execute using your, your skill set. That's not to say you don't run the play. You still run the play, but you, you find your spots in case they read the play and cut you off. You know where your spots are. Okay. Defensively. Control the boards. Usually the team that controls the boards is the one that wins. Why? Because you're holding the other team to, to one shot. You know, you're, you're holding them to, to one shot on every possession. And you're going down and, and you're finding your spots and you're going to realize that you're actually going to get more possessions on your end, more chances to score on your end. Chances are your team's going to be the winner, man, most of the time. But – that's the uh, that's the final installment. That's four out of four. Um, it's a new year, 2021. Yay. Um, get ready to train this year because I'll be looking forward to seeing you.